This anime about one dude having a hundred girlfriends is meant to be impressive? Are you serious? That's amateur numbers. Allow me to introduce Kamijo Toma from a certain magical index who has over 10,000 huh? girls huh? in his own harem. Yes, Bruh. that's right. And the series didn't even need that number in the title for it to make bank. But how is it even possible to get that many waifus to fall in love with you? Allow me to explain. Toma has a serious addiction. And no, it ain't drugs. It's actually wanting to save as many people as humanly possible with his mysterious power known as Imagine Breaker located in his right hand. He can nullify almost any other ability, whether magic or science, to defeat whoever comes his way, with some exceptions. Due to being such a dreamy hero, he is able to infect girls and some guys around him with something Index fans call Kamiyan disease. And no, I'm not talking about an STD. This sickness is what happens happens when someone falls in love with Toma, usually after he saves them from some problem or evil person. It's because Toma has to justify his own existence after being hit with amnesia in the very first story arc, making him strive to become the best person he can imagine after forgetting who he was in the past. Just like the main protagonist of 100 Girlfriends, Rentaro Aijo, Toma keeps adding more and more girls to his side who fall in love with him. While in Index, they are not exactly his girlfriend, as Toma is too busy being a Sigma male by stopping World War 3, saving humanity, and preventing the universe from total destruction. Cause he's a completely ordinary high school boy, according to the author. And while harem anime are anything but groundbreaking, I'm hesitant to call Index a harem unironically, despite 90% of the female cast wanting Toma's sausage. Not that I can blame them as it's not like there is a consistent group of girls who are following Toma around 24-7 like in other harem anime. Each arc usually focuses on one female protagonist and there is no guarantee they will stick around after it's over. Plus, how on earth is it physically possible to get over 10,000 girls to fall in love with you in a matter of days? As yes, the timeline of Index moves slower than Hiatus x Hiatus. In the third story of the series known as The Sisters Arc, Terma uncovers a dark scientific experiment conducted by Academy City, which aims to turn the strongest Esper Accelerator into a godlike being known as a level 6 Esper. And apparently, this can be achieved by killing thousands of clones of his fellow level 5, ranked two places below him, Misaka Mikoto. 20,000 clones to be exact. Accelerator managed to kill half of them, with majority being massacred off screen, with Mikoto attempting to bring an end to the project herself. After failing to defeat Accelerator, she accepted that the only way out would be to challenge him again, resulting in her death. Hoping this would disrupt the calculations to level up Accelerator, bringing an end to the slaughter. Luckily, Toma managed to get involved and said to Mikoto that he would try and defeat the number one level five, which would ultimately make the scientists lose faith in the project. Despite Mikoto saying defeating Accelerator is impossible for a level five, let alone for a level zero like Toma, he ran straight ahead to face his foe. Toma managed to save a Misaka clone being attacked by Accelerator accelerator and managed to pull off the victory as the underdog came out on top. This meant the remaining 10,000 clones no longer had to die, with the majority of them being sent to Academy City's secret institutions across the world, and a handful remaining in the city. Since the clones all send electromagnetic signals to each other passively due to the Esper power known as radio noise, they are linked to something known as the Miska network. It pretty much functions the same as the network of 10,000 computers, but replaced by anime girls. God bless Japan. The types of signals they send to each other include things like memories and past experiences, with even the deceased clones passing on all their information to their new sisters fresh out of the incubation tubes. Therefore, since Toma managed to save one clone from the psychotic anorexic albino kid, his heroic riz was so much 
that this Misaka clone fell for him. But that also means every single clone in the world also has, putting Terminus potential harem at over 10,000. That's not even including the other girls that Terminus saves on his journey. Also, if you would like to see me make a video about why harem anime are actually peak fiction, then subscribe to the channel and I'll consider making it if enough of you do so. It's your choice. It's funny that Terma's ability to influence others, mostly girls, and bring them to his side has been recognized by his enemies. As some random Aztec magic cabal all the way in Mexico decided our spiky-haired boy was threatening the balance of the world itself. You see, the world of Index is split between two sides. The magic side, formed of many different religions, cults, and magic users, and the science side, formed of Academy City, and its espers. Usually they stay out of each other's affairs with some exceptions, as any tensions could end up causing a third world war. While Toma seems to be sticking his right hand into both pies as he's bridging the gap between magic and science, all while bringing exceptional extraordinary espers and magicians to be affiliated with him due to Toma lending a hand to anyone in need. And some groups in the magic side have become concerned that Toma's influence could be spread so much that it could shatter the pre-existing quota that exists in the world. The name of Toma's group is referred to as the Kamijo faction, first mentioned by the Aztec magician Etzali who had gone undercover in Academy City to assassinate Toma and stalk Mikoto. Like the true Miska simp he is. Toma's faction actually has a rival group known as the Kamisato faction, or Kamisato's harem. As another perfectly ordinary high school boy called Kamisato Kakaru was blessed with a right hand power similar to Imagine Breaker, known as Will Rejector, which allows him to banish other things to a parallel timeline between worlds, as beings known as the magic gods had subconsciously wanted a different world to the one we are familiar with, and these feelings caused Will Rejector to spawn in Kakaru. With this newfound power, he ended up managing to solve many problems that came his way, which attracted many strange girls to him in a similar manner to Toma, with Kakaru managing to grow his harem to over 100 members in a matter of days. Honestly, I have no idea how that's feasibly possible, but sure, why not? Instead of enjoying all this attention from the opposite sex, Kakaru believed it was too good to be true. He was under the impression that all these relationships were superficial and were artificially caused by Will Rejector, thinking his harem didn't actually love him for who he truly was. And so, he sought vengeance upon the magic gods for ruining his perfectly normal life before the power. God, this dude needs to get laid. All this talk of harem makes me wonder, who actually has the biggest harem in anime as a whole? I guess the title of Ultimate Harem King does not belong to Toma, as it may be Reito Mizuhara from the anime World End Harem, where the main protagonist has to impregnate as many girls as possible after 99.9% .9 of the male population on Earth was wiped out. Yeah, there is no competing with him, unless you happen to know another character with an even bigger one. Let me know down in the comments below and check out these other awesome Toma videos on screen right now for more content just like this.